Hi, it's Jack from CFO Thought Leader bringing you a troubleshooter episode where we speak to industry experts and different members of the C-suite about top of mind subjects in finance. And we're pleased to have caught up with Carrie O'Connor, Cola J, CF, uh, yes. CEO of <laughs> yeah. VersaPay. Carrie, thank you for making time with us. Yeah. And from our recent discussions with CFOs, we have increasingly mm -hmm touched on this subject of AI readiness. And of course, what AI readiness means for one organization doesn't always translate to the next. So from your point of view, we'd be interested in knowing what are the questions you believe CFOs need to be asking themselves when it comes to AI <laughs> readiness? What would you tell us? You know, I may answer this, Jack, a little bit in a surprising way. I actually think CFOs and CEOs and frankly, just the C-suite needs to be asking their employees, are we already there? Um, I think far too often when we see the hype curve of trends um, and now with AI and generative AI, there's a belief of there's a lot you have to do to adopt it. And the reality is, is that we've seen AI within the infrastructures of our businesses for years. And when we saw ChatGPT launch back Gosh, it was a year ago, I think, this month. Um, uh, back in, in end of last year, you know, there was this kind of hyper adoption of it, and it's continued. and And I do think that there's a lot of technologies out there. I'll give you an example, like Expensify. Many people have used it; they can relate to it. You know, they've put an AI um, model underneath it in order to understand how people are paid, how to absolutely match um, payments with invoices and receipts, and so. I just use it as an example because I think the first question is, is it being used? And then how is it being used? Um, and if it is being used, you know, what are the right questions and controls you need to have within your organization to ensure that not only it's being used the right way and it's producing accurate results, but what's happening to the information and the data that you're feeding into these AI models. And so it's um, a fascinating journey for me that we learn there's a number of people within companies that are already using it. And we're now exploring, well, how do we incorporate it into our product offering, into the efficiencies in our back office to provide better experiences and solutions for our customers? And it seems like part of it is, is really educating the customers First, did you realize we, you know, you're already leveraging this type of AI when you do yeah. this type of transaction or you use our, our software. Uh, but going forward, as VersaPay looks to really, uh, you know, leverage AI more, perhaps, it seems like part of it has to be uh, your, your role is to educate uh, the finance departments. Am I right about that or? Yeah, yeah. Education is huge. I mean, and it will just continue to be at the forefront as new technologies are adopted. You know, at VersaPay, we've been actually using AI for 10 years um, in our cash application, um, which was um, a product we acquired about a year ago, and we've integrated into our overall product suite and technology stack. And so, um, with that, you know, we're able to provide way north of 90% accuracy when we're looking at digitizing your remittances and the data and applying it to an actual payment. And we know what that does. It ultimately helps to create efficiencies in the office of the CFO and, and more broadly. And with AI, as, as you and many know, that if you're leveraging it to get more increasingly accurate, you have to feed it with more information. Now we can talk about, is it anonymous? Is it pseudo anonymous? Is it traceable? All that. And I think that's like a really big education and a pillar that needs to come with adoption of this new tech. But in doing that, you know, as the more you do it, the more information, the more the models see, the better you become. And so one is definitely educating our customers where we are and where we aren't using it. The second is understanding from our customers, you know, what are the guardrails or the boundaries that they have within their own organization to adopt external or internal AI or large um, language models to be using? Because you know, if you were to ask the question, Jack, to any C-level executive, are you interested in accelerating the jobs that you need to get done for better outcomes? Um, and in this case, in our world, to unlock working capital, I would guarantee 10 out of 10 people would say yes. Um, and, you know, automation and AI allows you to do that. So the education around internally as well as 
you know, externally to our customers is, you know, do you know you're using it? And if you are where do you have the aspirations to drive automation? Do you want to buy or build? Um, and then how does the information flow throughout your organization? How it's used? How does it, um, where are the checks and balances? Because it's, it's not a perfect math yet. Um, and that's something we have to keep in consideration. Do, uh, how do you separate? Uh, I'd be interested in, uh, when you think of the sort of the, early adopters of the technology versus the laggards, you know, what are the characteristics uh, of a laggard? <laughs> How do we know we're, what group we're part of? Uh, you know, finance leaders are hoping that they're really uh, part of the early adopters or moving in that direction, the world-class users of AI. When you, is there a yeah. distinction you can make for us if you're, you're not performing here, perhaps you're moving into the laggard category? You know, I mean, the, the attribution is going to be difficult, I think, to make it relevant to your audience because there's probably so many permutations of people who listen to your podcast. But I will say in a lot of the research that we have done, a couple of very interesting statistics. Um, so one is 77 percent of CFOs reported that they need to automate their invoice to cash reconciliation process. And. And in doing so, they know that they can unlock working capital, which effectively could be the difference between a company surviving versus thriving. In addition to that, in research we've just done, and I'll couch this with it's in North America and specifically in the mid market, which is you know predominantly who we serve right now. Um, we have learned that 70 percent of the office of the CFO when it comes to account reconciliation has no automation. So they're still using spreadsheets and they're still using a lot of manual labor. And so that to me presents a huge opportunity of where we can make a difference for these businesses and in customers where we've been working with them for a number of years, they're seeing you know departments that were 60 people go down to six or two. And so I think that those attributions are probably the right ones. You know, if you're still working on spreadsheets and you know, have a large um, accounts receivable department, you're probably falling behind. Um, but I don't think this is a matter of keeping up with the Joneses as much as it is. How do you run and manage efficient businesses in a world where the cycles of change um, are just continue to be expedited? Carrie, as someone whose background perhaps has afforded you uh, a place to observe how technologies have moved in uh, to industry before and, you know, how exactly that happened internally um, and what were the steps uh, business leaders took to really leverage it. Um, and I, I go back to the finance leaders now. Are they having the right questions? Are they um, asking the right people? Are they Are they engaging with the right people? Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but what? No, Jack, it's fine. It's such a fascinating problem. And, and you know, and I'm very comfortable talking about this independent of VersaPay. Just my upbringing has been technology. I've been in product a good part of my career. Um, I've been in financial services for almost three decades. So, you know, at the end of the day, like it's a piece that I've thought a lot about. And particularly as we look at how do we consumerize business finance? So if you take a look at the patterns of what's happened in consumer finance disruption and the technology that effectively has driven disruption, the same thing's happening in business. So to answer your question of how do you know, CFOs and those in the office of the CEO know they're doing right, I think the question becomes is if their business is growing, has the staff that, they've, that they need or continue to need continuing to grow at the same rate? Because if it is, you probably haven't made the right investments. Um, and I think there's also an element of, you know, what is manual versus what has become automated. And those are like very simple metrics for me is if I look across the journey of the tasks and the jobs that need to get done and my business is growing, am I throwing more people at it or am I actually able to create operational leverage? Um, and I, I would say that the people you want sitting at the table you know, they aren't necessarily the people you would expect. I mean, I absolutely think that the office of the CTO needs to be there. The office of the product officer needs to be there. You know, companies have chief data scientists now um, and your CISO needs to be there because they have to understand the data flow. And, and it's not just about protectionistic measures that need to be put in place because you're 
you're feeding these models with so much information, but it's, it's also about they actually are sitting amongst the disruptors of how this tech is being applied. And so I think they can unearth and can reveal a lot of insights into what you need to be considering. But I'll share one more thing before I pause, which is I was talking to a number of in, you know, investors in this space um, over you know, the last couple of years. And I was kind of pushing the envelope with AI. So what needs to get done? How do you keep up? You know, are we using the best and the brightest? And someone said something interesting to me, which was the basic problem hasn't been solved yet. So before jumping or taking a leap of faith into like the best and the brightest technology, see if you actually have the problem solved. And then you can start applying on technology that will make you better and more efficient. Well, some great advice on this subject of AI readiness. We've been speaking with Carrie O'Connor Colage, CEO of VersaPay. Carrie, thanks so much for answering our questions. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.